This is Hip Big's travel guide on the Parthenon located in the city of Nashville in the U.S. state of Tennessee. In this Parthenon travel guide, we provide information and show you a little bit of ancient Greece, southern style, and the hidden treasure underneath it. We'll start with general introduction and location information, how to get to the Parthenon, and information and tips. Everything shared on this video is based on our own experience at the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee. You might be asking yourself, how did this Greek statue end up in the center of Nashville? Well, it was originally built for Tennessee's 1897 Centennial Exposition. Welcome to Hip Fig. If you like to travel, then subscribe to our Hip Fig Travel Channel. This is Hip Fig's Nashville, Tennessee Travel Guide Series. In this episode, we'll cover the Parthenon and Centennial Park in Nashville. The Parthenon is located inside Centennial Park on the corner of West End Avenue and 25th Avenue in downtown Nashville. You can set your GPS to 2600 West End Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee. Centennial Park is open from dawn to 11 p.m. daily. We drove from the Nashville Airport area. We took I-40 West towards I-65 North Memphis, Louisville. Then we took exit 209 towards Church Street and made a right on Charlotte Avenue. We stayed on Charlotte Avenue into Centennial Park to the Parthenon area. Don't worry, you won't miss this very large building in the middle of the park. There's free parking in Centennial Park and around its perimeter on a first-come, first-served basis. Some parking is available on the side streets surrounding the park. There's also a parking lot, but it looks like it gets full pretty fast, especially on weekends. We found a spot on Charlotte along the road and parked. It was a short walk to the Parthenon building. While walking to the Parthenon, we saw signs of historical events and sites of the Civil War. If parking is full, there is free parking available on Saturdays at all HCA building lots along Park Plaza on the north side of Centennial Park near Charlotte Avenue. If you don't have a car or just want to avoid the hassle of finding parking, then try the Old Town Trolley which has a stop here. For your convenience, we've put a link in the description for the Old Town Trolley. The Parthenon in Nashville is open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and on Sunday from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. It is closed on Mondays. We came on the Charlotte Avenue side and the entrance is on the opposite side of the building. Parthenon stands in the center of Centennial Park. The recreation of this 42-foot statue of Athena is a popular spot for locals and visitors to Nashville. If you're a Percy Jackson fan, then you know it was also featured in one of the books and the movie. The building and the Athena statue are both full-scale replicas of the Athenian originals in Greece and a tribute to Greek classical architecture. The building and the replicas found at the top of the building are detailed from the remnants and descriptions from the original sculptures in Greece which date back to 438 BC. The originals are housed in the British Museum in London. The entrance to the Parthenon is located on the bottom of the steps across from the lake. In this area you'll see a boat ride, fountain, and various snack and drink stands. In this area, there's a 0.6 mile paved trail around the lake with signs of historic information about the settings along this peaceful path. There's also nice seats along the way to enjoy the lake and shaded areas. For your information, the Parthenon is wheelchair accessible. The entrance fee for adults in summer of 2019 was $6 for adults, $4 for children, and $4 for seniors 62 and over. The Parthenon has two sections. 
the Statue of Athena, and the Parthenon Museum, which are all self-guided tours. After purchasing our tickets on the lower floor basement area, we got a brochure with a floor plan that helped us tour the building. Please be aware that there's no food, drinks, gum, pets, backpacks, or oversized bags allowed. There's a free locker available to put your backpack if needed, but those are limited. We began our self-guided tour on the bottom floor at the museum. At first it didn't look like it was very much, but actually it was really good. The Cowan collection was donated by James M. Cowan. These 63 pieces were originally anonymously donated between 1927 and 1929, which is part of the permanent collection in this museum and labeled Generous Donor. This collection has work done only by American artists. There are 57 American artists, which date between the late 19th and 20th centuries. Most are in the impressionistic style. Once we finished viewing the museum, we took the stairs upstairs to see Golden Athena. There's also an elevator should you need one. We got up into this large hall. The colossal statue of Athena greets you. The Athena statue is a full-size golden replica of the original. What the original Athena statue looked like is a bit limited. The gold and ivory statue was lost by 400 AD. There is some historical documentation of the statue which was used to replicate this statue. The original Athena Parthenos was structured on a wooden frame with carved ivory for skin and a golden wardrobe. This replica is actually quite impressive and detailed. The Athena statue was constructed from 1982 to 1990 and it was just plain white for 12 years. Then in 2002, the Parthenon gilded Athena in gold. In addition to the gilding, the project also included painting details on her face, wardrobe, and shield. There are also various activities available in this hall. Please check on their event schedule. After we finished gazing at this gigantic glistening goddess, we walked around to the side rooms. Here we saw statues and pieces of statues. These are plaster replicas of the real Parthenian marble figures which are directly cast from the original sculptures which adorn the pediments of the Athenian Parthenon. Alan LaCuire, a Nashville native, was selected to sculpt the Athena statue using the research of old ancient Greek documents. LaCuire researched using modern classical scholars for the most accurate archaeological information. Once we had our fill of this grand site, we took the stairs back down to the basement area. We exited the Parthenon the same way we came in. By the way, the restrooms are near the ticketing area. After our visit to the Parthenon, we roamed around the 132 acre Centennial Park. We walked the loop trail around the lake as well as viewed a beautiful sunken garden. There's even a way to talk to trees. There's a program called If Trees Could Sing which has some web videos with Nashville music stars talking about trees. There are trees with signs with QR codes and web addresses so that you can use your smart view, uh, phone to view videos of Nashville stars telling tree stories. The Parthenon and Centennial Park is a good way to spend a happy day in Nashville. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.